So we're here at the Celestron booth with Eric. Um, we've got some updates to this, this Origin. Last year we were here, we saw the Origin. Uh, we got a chance to test it on my channel. We have lots of cool new features. Eric, can you tell us a little bit about what's new? Yeah, so, so since, we've been, uh, since we introduced uh, Origin last year at Neve, we've been, our engineers have been working hard on improvements. And to summarize kind of like some of the most exciting things that uh, we've either already completed or should be shortly available to the public, um, let's talk about those features. So one of the things is we've, uh, we now allow Origin to be used on a wedge. And why, might, why would you want to use a wedge? Well, uh, with an altazimuth mount, as it tracks over long exposures, you get field rotation. Now, you don't see that in your Origin images because that area of the image, is just the, around, a little bit around the edge, is cropped. So you, right. don't, you never see so that. So the stars like, start to move on you in a circular pattern. Exactly, and you won't see that with the normal origin because the, the processing automatically crops it so you don't see the streak at the corners. Now, if you're, if you're imaging a small object that fits mostly in the center of the field of view, that's great. But if you're doing something that fills the whole field of view, you might be losing just a little bit of data on the corner. So for something like the California Nebulae, maybe you want to make sure that you get that full frame with no right. edge cropping. Then you can put on a wedge and it tracks equatorially and you'll have no field, uh, you'll have no cropping due to altazimuth field rotation. So it works really well. Basically, you just put on the wedge and then you tell Origin that you're on the wedge within the app. And then it'll initialize itself as normal. And then immediately after that, it'll ask you if you want a polar line. And then you say yes, and then instantly you just, you can uh, use the azimuth and uh, altitude slow motion adjustments to just dial in the number till it's close to zero on each axis and you're polar aligned and you're done. Cool. And, and is this the same tripod that came with the Origin originally and then just a wedge attachment on yes. top of it? Yes. Yep, the only extra thing you need to it to uh, to make this all work is is the uh, the optional wedge. So. so for those customers that have already purchased a Origin, um, this could be something that would be supported once they get the wedge. Uh, yes. Via software update. Yep. Yeah. So the software will be public, like I said, by May first. So if you have the wedge, then you can take advantage of this. So. Okay. And um, then we also have on top here something new. Yeah. Not new so, to the, not new to Celestron, but new to the Origin. Right. So so in equatorial mode, it unlocks longer than 30 second exposures. Right. Um, in, the, in a lot of cases, there's no reason to, to use longer than 30 second subs. But if you want to, um, you, on the, in the EQ mode, it unlocks the 30 second limit. So you can go as long as you want. And if you go much longer than 30 seconds, certainly on 50 seconds a minute, you might want to use the StarSense Auto Guider right. to provide the most accurate and the best tracking possible over that long exposure. Um, so if you are going to be doing longer subs and past a certain point, you may want to consider adding the StarSense Auto Guider. And what's nice about that is there's nothing to do except just plug it into Origin and it's automatically guiding so and working. So it's not going to become more complex. It's still going to be a very good user experience yes. that doesn't feel much more difficult. It's just more capable. Exactly. So you essentially just take the StarSense Auto Guider, put it in, plug it in. Nothing to do within the app. It'll just basically guide perfectly at that point. Now that, you know, so a couple, a couple points on that. So the mount does track very well, especially if you're polar aligned, for at, you know, at least 30 seconds, 40 seconds. And in many situations, the, the fact of the matter is because RASA is so fast, it'll saturate the sensor right. in less than a minute. So if you're under a dark sky or using a nebula filter, those are the conditions that you can start using long exposures. And then you might want to consider the StarSense Auto Guider. That makes sense. But for many applications, to be honest, these just enhance the basic functionality, but in no way do you need these things to achieve great images or get the experience that you want. These are just extra, more advanced things that allow you to do more. Now, I was over at the Prima Luce uh, spot, and they've got something new for Origin. Yes. You want to check that out as well? Yeah, let me go grab it. Prima Luce, we sort of worked in partnership with them, and it is a Prima Luce product, not a Celestron product. But we've, we've developed a custom uh, Geodo flat frame generator that fits right onto the Origin Dew Shield. And what this allows you to do now is reframe the camera. So, so, so if you have an extended object, so let's say Andromeda, and it doesn't line up exactly in, this, in the field of view that, the way that you want, what you can do is essentially rotate the camera. So loosen the ring, rotate the camera to new orientation, and then once you do that, 
you can start imaging as normal, but if you really want to get the best results, you should take a new flat frame. And we've made it easy by now, after you've rotated the camera, just put on the flat frame. And then from the same smart device that controls Origin, you can control this, turn it on, turn the brightness on, go back to the Origin app, take a new flat frame. It just, it takes just a, like a seconds, literally. And then you take this off and now you're ready to image again with your new camera orientation, um, with your new flat frame, so. So if you're coming from the other direction of you're already doing astrophotography and you like the idea of simplifying the process but still getting the quality that you're wanting or used to even, uh, this is going to be now a scope that you can have all of those bells and whistles, but they're not necessary. And I think that's the right w way to go about this, right? We're, we're trying to get people interested in the hobby. We're making the user experience easier, which is lowering the bar, which I know you have a lot of interest in trying to do over the years. Um, and But also we're trying to continue to support, right? The advanced um, and intermediate users who have an expectation of having the ability to control their images in ways that they're used to, which is what this is providing. So thank you for these awesome products, Eric. Thanks, Dave. All right, thank you, always a pleasure. If you're still watching and like videos like this one, please consider becoming a Patreon patron. Memberships start as low as $3 per month with benefits including opportunities to ask questions of our guests. Also, please consider to like, subscribe, and share this video to help us bring the universe even closer than you think.